Search the Scriptures. We are on study number 10 in this fantastic book of Numbers, and today's study covers Numbers chapter number 15. And there are three different questions that we are going to try to answer today in study 10. First is this, what do verses 1 through 21 teach us about making offerings that are pleasing to God? Secondly, why was there no way of atonement for the person who sinned defiantly, and what does this mean? third question, notice by whom the deliberate lawbreaker had to be dealt with and in what way, and why is such church discipline so little practiced? Numbers chapter number 15. If you have a Bible, take that out and look at it. If not, you can look at the screen, read along with you. Uh, beginning with the first verse, the Lord says to Moses, speak to the Israelites and say to them, after you enter the land that I am giving you as a home, and you present to the Lord offerings made by fire from the herd or the flock as an aroma pleasing to the Lord, whether it's a burnt offering or sacrifice for special vows or free will offerings or festival offerings, then the one who brings his offering shall present to the Lord a grain offering of a tenth of an ephah of fine flour mixed with a quarter of a hen of oil. With each lamb for the burnt offering or the sacrifice, prepare a quarter of a hen of wine as a drink offering. With the ram, prepare a grain offering of two tenths of an ephah of fine flour mixed with a third of a hen of oil and a third of a hen of wine as a drink offering. Offer it as an aroma pleasing to the Lord. When you prepare a young bull as a burnt offering or sacrifice for a special vow or a fellowship offering to the Lord, bring with the bull a grain offering of three-tenths of an ephah of fine flour mixed with a half a hen of oil. Also bring a half a hen of wine as a drink offering. It will be an offering made by fire, an aroma pleasing to the Lord. And each bull or ram, each lamb or young goat is to be prepared in this manner. Do this for each one, for as many as you prepare. Everyone who is native born must do these things, and in this way, when he brings an offering made by fire as an aroma pleasing to the Lord, for the generations to come, whenever an alien or anyone else living among you presents an offering made by fire as an aroma pleasing to the Lord, he must do exactly as you do. The community is to have the same rules for you and for the alien living among you. This is a lasting ordinance for the generations to come. You and the alien shall be the same before the Lord. The same laws and regulations will apply both to you and the alien living among you. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the Israelites and say to them, Speak to the Israelites and say to them, When you enter the land to which I am taking you and you eat the food of the land, present a portion as an offering to the Lord. Present a cake from the first of your ground meal and present it as an offering from the threshing floor. Throughout the generations to come, you are to give this offering to the Lord from the first of your ground meal. Now if you unintentionally fail to keep any of these commands the Lord gave Moses, any of the Lord's commands to you through him from the day the Lord gave them and continuing through the generations to come, and if this is done unintentionally without the community being aware of it, then the whole community is to offer a young bull for a burnt offering as an aroma pleasing to the Lord, along with its prescribed grain offering and drink offering and a male goat offering uh, for a sin offering. And the priest is to make atonement for the whole Israelite community, and they will be forgiven, for it was not intentional, and they have brought, the, brought to the Lord for their wrong an offering made by fire and a sin offering. The whole Israelite community and the aliens living among them will be forgiven, because all the people were involved in the unintentional wrong. But if just one person sins unintentionally, he must bring a, young, bring a year old female goat for a sin offering. And the priest is to make atonement before the Lord for the one who erred by sinning unintentionally. And when the atonement has been made for him, he will be forgiven. One and the same law applies to everyone. Everybody who sins unintentionally, whether he's native-born Israelite or he's an alien. But anyone who sins defiantly, if they're a native-born person or an alien, that blasphemes the Lord, and that person must be cut off from his people, because he has despised the Lord's word and broken his command that person must surely be cut off. His guilt remains on him. While the Israelites were in the desert, a man was found gathering wood on the Sabbath day. And those who found him gathering wood brought him to Moses and Aaron and the whole assembly, and they kept him in custody because it wasn't clear what should be done to him. And then the Lord said to Moses, The man must die. 
and the whole assembly must stone him outside the camp. So the assembly took him outside the camp and stoned him to death as the Lord commanded Moses. And the Lord said to Moses, Speak to the Israelites and say to them, Throughout the generations to come, you are to make tassels on the corners of your garments with a blue cord on each tassel, and you will have these tassels to look at. And so you will remember all the commands of the Lord that you may obey them and not prostitute yourselves by going after the lust of your own hearts and eyes. Then you will remember to obey all my commands and will be consecrated to your God. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt to be your God. I am the Lord your God. Okay, let's look at these questions. In the first 21 verses, what do they teach about making offerings which are pleasing to the Lord? Well, to me, the most interesting thing that I find in these first 21 verses is the requirement now for grain and wine and oil uh, in the offering. This section starts out with the words, After you enter the land, I'm giving you as a home. God, it doesn't seem, was requiring grain and wine when they were in the desert, but he was going to require it once they settled in the land. The requirement of grain and wine was a reminder that without his provision, they'd still be wandering in the desert. They'd have no opportunity to grow crops or to tend vineyards. Second question, why was there no way of atonement for the person who sinned defiantly? And what does that mean? Well, the fact there was no way to atone for the one who sinned defiantly or intentional sin in Numbers 15 is reminiscent of the writer of Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 26 when he said, If we deliberately keep on sinning after we have received the knowledge of the truth, no sacrifice for sins is left. These passages are quite frightening in a lot of ways. Uh, how many times have you and I known something was wrong, known that it was sin, and we sinned anyway? Just this past weekend, a young boy came up to me at a church picnic and he said, Pastor Troy, I, I owe you an apology. I asked him, well, what do you owe me an apology for? He said, well, when you were praying, I took a brownie and I ate it. Now, how does this passage apply to the little brownie thief at the picnic? I hope it doesn't apply at all. I know that he knew he wasn't supposed to take the brownie while I was praying. Everybody had their eyes closed. Yet he intentionally and deliberately took the brownie. Upon his confession, I didn't have the church all gather around take him to a corner of the property and stone him. Now, is my pardon of the brownie thief unscriptural? After all, it was intentional, it was deliberate. Well, I hope the pardon wasn't unscriptural. If it is, then I should have been pelted with rocks a long, long time ago. So, that being said, our intentional and our deliberate turning away from God to fulfill the lust and desires of our flesh that's got to be taken far more seriously than we do. I think the brownie thief was right for taking it seriously. He probably had the answer. You know, while the brownie was still in his mouth, it began to turn bitter. Before it hit his stomach, it was beginning to sour already. To have ignored that bitter taste of that sin would truly have been to turn his back on God. You know, it's when we think we can get by with sin and get a free pass, that's when we're truly committing the unpardonable sin. That's when we're truly blaspheming what the Lord has done. Third question, notice by whom the deliberate lawbreaker had to be dealt with, and in what way, and why is such church discipline so little practiced? Well, the deliberate lawbreaker was dealt with by the entire community of faith punishment was swift and was decisive. Such discipline is no longer practiced in our culture today because we're so afraid somebody might be offended. We're overly concerned that someone might leave. Uh, this has left us with a weak, with an undisciplined church. Uh, this does not mean, however, that church discipline is not practiced outside of our culture. Church discipline is a regular part of church life, I know, on the continent of Africa. It remains a very public practice involving the entire congregation of believers. Membership cards are revoked. People are forced to sit on the back row. Uh, and public testimony and leadership are considered to be absolutely, completely, totally out of the question. Try that in the American church. 
and you're inviting a lawsuit. So probably for all of the wrong reasons, we avoid a discipline in the church, probably something we need to be a lot more uh, uh, concerned with and deal with a lot more on a lot more regular basis. I hope this study in the book of Numbers is a blessing to you. hope you're enjoying it and getting more out of it than you ever dreamed possible. And I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. God bless. Thank you.